What is up, everybody? This is Anthony. What is going on? You are tuned in to VR365. We are a daily live stream that happens, well, daily, you know, Monday through Sunday, seven days a week. We bring you guys VR news, VR discussion, reviews, previews, rumors, innuendo, all that type of stuff. That is our specialty. That's what we do here. And today is Friday. It's January 4th. It is 1 p.m. Pacific time, two hours later than normal. Apologies for that. My son had a doctor's appointment. I had to take him to that conflicted with uh, the schedule there. And I felt it was slightly important to take him to that. So had to reschedule my show to 1 p.m., but it is all good. We are here in the building. And I got to admit, folks, it is kind of a lackluster news day. We don't have a lot going on, so this may be a bit of a shorter episode. Of course, I do say this basically every time, and it always ends up being about an hour. And sometimes I say we got a really short episode, and it ends up being one of our longer episodes, so you just never know with this sort of thing, although we are looking forward to the CES next week very excited about that the winter consumer electronics show or ces 2019 anything that you want to talk about as far as that goes we are excited for the possibility of some new vr hardware making its appearance at ces 2019 we'll have to wait and see what that has been about again um so let's see what are we doing now all right so the number one topic that we well the number one story that i have right now is Basically, release dates are always kind of a big deal. When are certain games coming out? So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our webby browser window here. And I got to click on this. So the Mage's Tale. Now, we've already seen this trailer. I don't need to run it again. For some reason, the trailer is rather low resolution. It's not very good. It's not that impressive. But apparently, this trailer has been re-put on playstation's youtube channel and at the very end it now shows a date and it shows an official launch date of february 5th so the mage's tale is going to be arriving on february 5th for the playstation vr and that is going to give us one of the bigger playstation well it's really one of the bigger releases in february that has that has been locked in with an actual release date that has been locked down. So the Mage's Tale becomes one of the bigger games in the month of February, at least at this early stage in the game. I've already talked about how I really enjoyed the Mage's Tale. I played it when it was an Oculus Rift exclusive. I actually had an HTC Vive at the time and I played it on Revive. Struggled a little bit with the controls on Revive and it will be interesting to see as they bring this game over to PlayStation VR, exactly how is the translation going to work? Now, I'm assuming that you're using two individual move controllers. Um, that, that's basically what I'm, I'm assuming. You're going to use two move controllers, but the controls could be a bit convoluted. But we're still pretty excited for the Mage's Tail hitting PSVR. And DLG27 says, I hope it is not as blurry as the trailer. Yeah, the blurry is definitely, uh, the blurry, the trailer is definitely blurry. There's no question about it. And it's not just, it's not just me grabbing it off of YouTube and it's somehow being blurry in that respect. But I, I mean, just, w I watched the trailer on YouTube and it still is a bit blurry. And Phil Yarn says, I've never finished The Mage's Tale. Welcome to the club, Phil, because you know damn well I haven't finished it either. No, I probably got uh, maybe like 70% of the way through the Mage's Tale and ended up getting stuck on it and have not, I have not completed the Mage's Tale. I have not finished the Mage's Tale. I enjoyed my time that I was in the game and when it first arrived, it was actually one of the biggest and best VR games at the, at the date of its arrival. Like if you went back to that point in time, 
we really hadn't had a lot of VR games that had legitimate storytelling that was going on in the game with characters that were actually talking to you, voice work and stuff. That's become a bit more commonplace now, so it isn't as much of a shocker. But yeah, I have not finished The Mage's Tale. Now the trailer that you see right here on the screen, this is a game called Node. N-O-D-E, and I believe it's being developed by Cubic Planet Studio. And I love this trailer. I love the lighting. I love the look of this game. Kind of reminds me of old school PC games from like the late 90s, the early 2000s. Kind of has that look a little bit. I love, I love definitely, yeah, the, the lighting effects and all of that that is going on. This is a game called Node. And I believe that this game isn't coming for an incredibly long time, though. This might be like a 2020 release or something. I'd have to double check. But it does look pretty sweet. Okay, so what else is in the news? Well, you know what? We do have a trailer. It's a teaser trailer, and it is incredibly short. And it isn't all that great. But basically, it is a trailer for something called Unreal PT. Unreal PT. Do you guys remember? Do you remember way back in the days, there was a demo on PlayStation 4. It was called PT. And it was going to be kind of like a Silent Hill kind of a thing. It was being made by Konami. And everybody was talking about this demo. And everybody was playing the demo, myself included. This was back in my flat days. I remember actually playing it in this room with my projector shining on that on that huge screen that's over there, playing it in the dark, playing it with my volume cranked to maximum level. And I actually even remember standing up in front of, because I have this big 128 inch screen that I don't use anymore, it's kind of dead now. But back then I remember standing up, playing PT, and, and like walking forward with my joystick and it was, it's such a huge screen, and I'm standing right in front of it. It almost felt like VR. And this was one of these things where everybody kind of challenged, like, will you play PT? Will you play it at night with uh, all the lights turned off and the volume cranked up? Will you play it with no one in your house? It was all about this thing called PT. So why don't I go ahead and load this very short teaser trailer for it, and we can talk about this really quick. So I'm going to go ahead and grab this uh, short trailer for PT. Let me go ahead and find it here. Uh, one second. Okay, did you see it? <laughs> did you see it? That is the trailer. So the trailer is basically a refrigerator wa uh, rocking back and forth. Some very uninspired font right there that just says Unreal PT. And that there is basically a playable demo on itch.io. This is the trailer. What is the deal right now with trailers? We had that trailer just the other day. What was it for? Vader Immortal. It was like, why are you even wasting our time with some of these trailers? Like, I would imagine they could do a little bit more than this. But this is Unreal PT. Now, it's not actually designed specifically for VR, but it supposedly will have VR support. And this is out right now. But unfortunately, if you're on an Oculus Rift, um, you're kind of out of luck because it's not working on the Oculus Rift. But let's go ahead and switch over to the web browser window here. And I still got it on Mage's tail right here. But let's switch over to here. Okay, so this is on itch.io. This is Unreal PT. And it says, what is Unreal PT? Unreal PT is a short psychological horror game completely recreating the atmosphere and gameplay of the PT of PT originally published on PlayStation 4. You know what was kind of trippy about PT guys? I remember this. Check this out. So, I had a PlayStation 4 that I wanted to sell 
and I happened to have the PT demo on my PlayStation 4. And because Sony took this off their store and you simply could not get the PT demo anymore, I was able to sell this used PlayStation 4 for like $100 more than anybody could possibly get for their PlayStation 4. I, I remember that now. Man, PT, I love you. You got you got me an extra 100 bucks Just because I had that demo saved onto my PS4, it got me an extra 100 bucks So I basically had to leave that account on there so that people could still play that PT demo. And the person that bought it, like one of the main reasons, you know, they paid like 100 bucks extra just to get this demo. That's how much of a sensation this was for a brief window of time. This was back before VR really hit, I think, and everybody was like playing it on YouTube. You know, it was like a big deal. It was like a big thing. And everybody was like, have you played PT? Did you play it with the lights out, man? Did you play it at midnight? You know, blah, blah, blah. But I'm looking at these pictures here and it does look like a pretty accurate recreation. I mean, just looking at these pictures, it definitely does look like an accurate recreation. Okay, Unreal PT was under constant development over the course of nine months, starting in April 2018, ending in January 2019. Textures, models, animation, gameplay, and code have been recreated from scratch. Um, why doesn't Konami just have this shit removed immediately? That's what I want to know. Uh, or, or can they? Can they have this? Like, if this guy's just giving this away and it's just free... This is by Radius Gordello. I don't know if that's an individual person. I don't know if that is the developer of this game. But uh, I hope you guys enjoy playing this as much as I loved making it. Um, so there is kind of like a... I don't know if it's a demo or if it's a whole thing. It is possible to complete the entire game using only VR and your preferred control input method. Edit. I've got one report that VR has some issues which may cause nausea, so proceed with caution. Note number one, the game will automatically start in VR mode if a VR headset is connected. If you have one connected and want to play it normally, you'll have to disconnect it first. Note number two, room scale VR is not officially supported. It works, but you will clip through objects if you start physically moving away from the sensor. And uh, let's see, I think there's more information, though, that has come out here. I'm going to scroll down because I believe people on the Oculus Rift are unable to play this, if, uh, if, I, if I'm understanding. Okay, VR support on Oculus is broken. There's a fisheye distortion resulting in, in a view that feels widely out of scale, shallow, and wrong. It appears everyone is having this issue. My guess is that the distortion that is applied to the image in the headset display to correct for the lenses is off or set to the wrong value. So yeah, I guess you know you're totally boned if you have an Oculus Rift, which is my situation. This would be something like if this really worked and there wasn't a problem, I would absolutely go into this and I would absolutely record gameplay footage of this because I have very specific memories of this PT thing. And basically the coolest thing about PT is that it was just a simple hallway. You know, it was basically just this hallway, a couple of doors, a couple of little areas, and you would kind of open a door, you'd walk through the hallway, but subtle things would keep changing. And then you would hear like news reports on the radio. It was just a really creepy thing. It was a damn shame that... They just gave up on it and stopped it, and it was just kind of a weird, weird thing. But PT is a big deal. Or, I mean, it was a big deal back in the days. But I'm going back over here, over to chat, and um, let's see. Paradise Studios says Silent Hills would probably have been the best or second best Silent Hill game in the series. So sad. F Konami. Yeah, a lot of people talk about F Konami. Unreal puppy torture. Uh, Scion says it's a Muppet trapped in the fridge. And Phil Yarn says flat gamers don't or flat games don't scare me no more after being in VR. Yeah, it is hard, but this was a game like this didn't scare me that much. Um, the bathroom was so creepy. That's crunchy. It really was. It was pretty creepy. It's one of those things where you psych yourself up. If you psych yourself up so much before you play it, you're probably going to be pretty freaked out by it. But if you're just like, okay, there's nothing that could hurt me. 
it's a two-dimensional screen. It can't come out and kill me. You know, I, I don't believe that. So that is Unreal PT, but there are some issues out there. Hopefully that will get patched at some point, and all of us with our Oculus Rifts will be able to try it. Okay, let's go to our next news story of the day. And I'm going to go ahead and go back to our webby browser here. And let's see, where is our next news story? I need to go to the Vive subreddit. And so basically, one of the news stories that I've seen here is that HTC, their sales were down over 61% in the year 2018. Now, these are overall sales, I believe. And the CEO said that HTC is going to continue their efforts in VR, augmented reality, artificial intelligence, 5G, networking, and blockchain technology. Yeah, just about every little buzzword you can possibly throw in. And this is the number one upvote right here buzzwords.join yeah pretty much that's basically what it is it's all the various bud buzzwords you know 5g 5g is a big buzzword blockchain artificial intelligence i don't know why don't they have like machine learning like they forgot one they should have had machine learning in in there um i don't know there's probably a couple of other little words that they should have added in as well but that's pretty much what we're looking at here but in terms of this disaster that is going on for for uh, HTC, we have to remember that this this downfall is mostly due to phones. Like their actual VR sales are such a tiny percentage overall of what they are doing here in terms of their sales being down. But the thing is, VR is not going to support this company 100%. That is a problem. So if they are going to try to pivot 100% to VR, I'm trying to scroll down here to see if anybody has any like actual good information about. Um, everybody's like complaining about how the controller costs 130 bucks. I've seen this one guy say over and over again that you can buy a $20 controller at Walmart that is a knockoff Xbox controller that has better plastics and better parts than the $130 Vive controller. And I don't know that that is actually like, I think he's kind of going a little bit overboard there. Maybe if you get like a $50, $60 legitimate Xbox controller, it might have some better parts than the uh, $130 Vive controller. But yeah, a lot of people are yapping back and forth about what this means for HTC. We've already known that HTC was in major trouble. A lot of people believe they're going to die very soon. Like, they're not going to be around two years from now. We're just going to have to wait and see. And this kind of does throw into question what is going on with Valve. And does Valve still have a relationship with HTC? Is Valve paying attention to the overall health of this company? Is Valve in a situation, though, where they don't have seven, eight different companies beating their door down wanting to do this. And maybe HTC is a company that is wanting to do this. They've already got a relationship with them. They've already got some contracts with them. They've already got a deal worked out with HTC. So maybe Valve is going to stick with HTC to the bitter end. We're just going to have to wait and see. But yeah, this is another Debbie Downer kind of a story here. I believe there is stock out there for HTC, but I don't know. Let me go. I'm going to go ahead and click on this. I'm going to click on this and it's going to go to some website. Um, HTC, yeah, 2018 sales are down over 61%. HTC said its consolidated sales for this year totaled basically 768 million. It's down 60, nearly 62% from last year, the seventh consecutive year of decline. HTC has entered the virtual reality market to try to offset the weakness of its smartphone operations. Those efforts have failed to boost the company's sales as the VR division only accounted for a small fraction of its revenue. That's the problem there. It'd be one thing to pivot over to VR, but VR is such a small part of it. But you know what? Blockchain, baby, blockchain. Blockchain technology, originally devised for trans transactions of the digital currency Bitcoin, 
is seen as the new backbone of a new type of internet which information held on a blockchain exists on a shared blah 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 blockchain blockchain i remember there was some rap that somebody did about blockchain that i thought was pretty freaking hilarious and it was basically all the uh you know all the crypto miners and everybody it was like blockchain blockchain it was like some kind of rap about blockchain it was pretty funny that was quite a bit a while ago Okay, what else is going on right now in the VR gaming world? Well, we do have a sale on a popular game that a lot of people talk about. Now, we talk about Wipeout VR all the time for PlayStation VR, and we've we've said it a number of times that Wipeout VR is one of these things that probably makes HTC Vive and Oculus Rift and Windows Mixed Reality players a little bit jealous, a little bit jelly over Wipeout VR. One of the five best VR games of the year. I believe it is Fluke Rogie's number one VR game of 2018. Don't let me put voices into Fluke's mouth, but I thought he had it ranked number one himself personally. But every time I start talking about Wipeout VR, we have somebody in chat that talks about distance. We have somebody in chat that talks about red out. We have somebody in chat that talks about ballistic NG or all these different games that are on PC that they say are basically the same exact thing. They're just as good. Stop yapping about Wipeout VR. It's not that big of a deal. We got plenty of this stuff on PC. Well, one of them that everybody talks about is Red Out Enhanced Edition, and it is 80% off. So here is Red Out Enhanced Edition. The reviews are very positive. Um, both on recent and all reviews, both of them are very positive. The game has been around for a while. There is a demo. Now, I don't know if this demo will work in VR. If it does work in VR, then I should probably download it and try it, right? Why haven't I got around to it? I don't know. Um, but there is a demo out there, but it says buy Red Out Enhanced Edition. It is a daily deal, although that you got 44 hours, which sounds a little bit more than a single day, but it is 80% off you can grab this for seven bucks. Now, typically when you think about 80% off, you think this might be $4 or $3, but the price is a bit high. 35 bucks is the standard price for Red Out Enhanced Edition, so it's, it's staying pretty solidly at that price. So you can grab it for seven bucks, not a bad deal. So if you are a VR gamer that has been very, if you're a PC, VR gamer that has been jealous of Wipeout VR all this time, you want something that might give you that kind of a Wipeout feel, you could possibly check out Red Out Enhanced Edition. It says, Red Out is a tribute to the old racing monsters such as F-Zero, Wipeout, Roll Cage, and Pod. Somebody was saying they wanted a Pod Racer in VR. Okay, well, here's kind of your Pod Racer. I've heard good things about this game, and Red Out Enhanced Edition, I know for a fact, on VR game rankings, on our top 100 Vive rankings, and our, I mean our top 200, our top 200 Vive rankings, our top 200 Oculus Rift rankings, Red Out Enhanced Edition, it appears, it ranks on there, like it's usually in like the 130s, 140s or something, but people are fans of this, so it probably is a pretty decent game. I probably should try the demo if the VR mode works with the demo. It does say the VR mode for this game requires the use of a gamepad or a keyboard and mouse. So you are going to need to whip out your old Xbox 360 wired controller or some type of controller, basically. You're probably going to need that to be able to play this game. Your motion controller is not going to work with this. But that is Red Out Enhanced Edition. All right, I'm looking over here at chat. I just wanted to see maybe there's somebody out there that is really into Red Out um, today, but I don't know about that. Um, Mr. Thamon says VR headset market has grown 8.2% in quarter three, led by Sony, PlayStation VR, Oculus. HTC sales were really low. Um, okay, and da, 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 da. Kevin Mars says, sorry, War Dust is the number one game. Yeah, you know when we did our Game of the Year awards? I was going to have an award, and I don't believe I got around to this. I, I don't believe I, I don't think I did this, but I was planning on doing it. But I was going to give the best game of the year that we did not rank in our top 25. Like, what game barely missed? 
a number of people actually did talk about war dust. There were a number of people that a couple of people were like, well, war dust is actually my number one game, but it's not among your top 25 games. So there is some love out there for war dust. Um, Phil Yearn says wipe out destroys red out flat out. Yeah, that's pretty, that's what I would assume. Like, I don't think you can say ballistic NG distance wipe out. Uh, I mean, red out. Like a lot of people say, oh yeah, they're they're the same. It's basically the same game. I don't know, man. There's subtleties to Wipeout. Like there's certain things about Wipeout that make it Wipeout. There's certain things about the design of the ships and everything. There's just, but it could get close. I'm not denying that one of these games could get really close to that. Crunchy says, does Wipeout use move controllers? Uh, no, no, it doesn't. You you just use a regular DualShock Four, as far as I know. Um, but yeah, driving wheel or nothing for me. That is Kevin Mars and Stuart Gregerson says steam controller for the win. Yeah. Is there people out there really using steam controllers? I don't know the touchpad. I want some regular thumbsticks. Like I am a regular thumbstick guy. Okay. Now I don't know if you guys remember, but yesterday on yesterday's episode, I was trying to download this one video it took forever to download and ultimately I was basically ending the show when it finally downloaded but I have that video so we can check it out but first let me go to the oculus subreddit to kind of give you guys what I was talking about here okay so this was this this was the topic this was where I got the video this guy said six months ago I decided to learn game development and make a VR game where the player avatar is driven completely by physics. Here is the progress. Okay, this is what I'm talking about here. Um, now, I don't know anything about this. Like, this could be a total and utter dud, but I grabbed this clip. I haven't checked it out yet, but I do have the clip. Let's go ahead and check it out together and we can see if this is interesting because I am very interested in physics. Like I'm very interested in putting our bodies into the world. I think we could add so much immersion by putting our bodies into the world. And so this guy is talking about a play, player avatar driven completely by physics. I don't know exactly what he means by this, but let's go ahead and check this video out. Let's see what it's all about. And it might be kind of interesting. So let me go ahead and grab this and we'll check it out. All right, here we go. Okay, well, I did not know it was going to be formatted like this, but we do got full body. You know, there is full body uh, inverse kinematics here. Not a lot of volume here for this video so the guy grabs a couple of guns he's pushing it against the table okay showing some physics there kind of blade and sorcery style throwing a gun up yeah that's really accurate <laughs> i guess if you're going into slow-mo drops it on the table there Oh, don't kill the poor robot. I like that. Like when he's looking down at his legs and shoes, like I really like that. Like that looks good. Like that does look good. Okay, lightsabers of some variety. Batons or something. Oh, okay, he's going to go up and smack the poor robot. Oh, don't tase me, bro. And you can't tase him in his chest. Ah, oh, poor robot. This is just straight robot abu abuse. Crash test dummies. Yeah, I don't know what like swinging that has to do with the with your player avatar here. Okay, here's your hands, individual hands. I don't know exactly how he's doing all of that. Hmm. But anyway, this does look kind of interesting. I'm going to go ahead and switch back to our normal view here, back to our standard scene. And I don't know what kind of weird aspect ratio this is. I was going to try to expand it, but it's actually, this is how the video I think looks. It's like up in a corner or something. Or maybe when I converted it, I screwed it up. My bad. 
But anyway, guys, the one thing I definitely do like about this video, the one thing I really like about it is when he looks down at his foot. Like, I really like that. That's the money shot for me. This is not the money shot. Here's the money shot. Nope, he's going to shoot the gun first. Okay, shoot the robot's head. Let's get one more money shot before we die. There we go. Robot's head destroyed. Okay, look down at your feet. There we go. Look at that. That's the money shot, ladies and gentlemen. That is the money shot. Yeah, buddy. No, seriously, though, I we've seen a lot of games, right? We've seen a lot of games that have inverse kinematics, and they give you a body. For example, like Contractor... Does Contractors do it? I know like Zero Caliber gives you a body. There's a lot of different things that they do inverse kinematics for like your shoulders, your forearms, your hands, and your hands and your wrists and your forearms are, are done very well. And then they try to ex extrapolate that to your shoulders and your upper body and your torso and all of that. But one of the things that I've always noticed when I look at this stuff is I'm looking at my body I'm looking at my chest and it's like coming like way out here. It's like making me like a big fat dude with like a lot of extra weight on the front of me. And, and I'm, I'm like looking at it and I'm like, I'm like, this isn't right here. If I'm looking down at myself, I would look down and I see my chest. I see my leg. I see my foot there. And when this guy actually looks down, it, it kind of has the kind of viewpoint that I'm familiar with. So Hopefully there will be some good stuff that comes out of this. You know, um, we, we definitely need to improve this. I, I believe immersion will increase exponentially when we start to figure this stuff out. So when we're looking around at our bodies, it looks a little more realistic. Um, but yeah, so that video is a little bit more boring than I thought it would be. Okay, what else did we want to get into here? I've got one other story to go to. So let me go ahead and go back to our web browser. So we're going to go back over here to the Webby browser, and let's go to Upload VR. Okay, Upload, actually, you know, we can refresh Upload VR real quick and just kind of do a quick rundown of some of the biggest uh, stories that are going on. CES 2019 predictions, VR's next generation is still developing. That's something you guys might want to take a look at. There's a former Microsoft researcher that is now at Facebook. He's talking about some innovations in haptics. Of course, we did see this fan remake of Silent Hill. It's got experimental VR support, but it does have some issues. Fire Escape review. Actually, let's see what they say about this review. This is something I am legitimately jealous of in terms of people that have um, Pixel, Pixel Daydream. You know, they're able to check this out. I am not able to check this out. And I am gen I'm genuinely jealous of everybody that is able to check this out. Final say, worth watching. Okay. Fire Escape is available now on Google Daydream. The first episode is free, whereas the others are available as in-app purchases. So they're basically saying it's worth watching. So it sounds much more of like not a ton of interactivity if they're talking more about watching it. Um, it's, it's kind of this voyeuristic kind of a thing, which makes sense. Okay, um, here's a story. Oculus Rift is on sale in the UK. So there's some deals that are going on, at least in the UK. Um, I know Jim Hall, one of our chatters that shows up occasionally, he is very interested. He's going to have a brand new computer that is going to be gaming capable. And I believe he has a PlayStation VR and he has an Oculus Go, but he does not have a PC VR system yet and he really wants to try to wait for like a new high-end VR headset from Valve maybe the Vive Cosmos or maybe something that will be announced by LG in a couple of days here at CES but another thing that he's considering is possibly grabbing an Oculus Rift especially if he can grab one for 350 and use it as kind of a band-aid temporarily until there's something else that is really impressive. And then you can make the switch. You can always sell sell this off. You could take a loss. So you can use it kind of as a temporary headset until something else happens. Okay, so Jim Hall, if you're interested, in the USA, the discounted price is 350 bucks, 
Amazon and Microsoft are offering this price, but both of them are completely out of stock, apparently. So there has been some good sales that are... I mean, the, the Rift is selling very well. If Amazon is completely out of stock, and if the Microsoft store is completely out of stock, that is a good thing. Now, of course, Jim Hall, he can go ahead and drive to his nearest Best Buy, or he can jump onto the internet and head to Newegg. You might be able to grab yourself an Oculus Rift for 350 And then in the UK, there's some discounts that are going on in there. In Canada, it's all bad. You're paying way more for everything in Canada, which does suck. In Germany, they have a discounted price as well. But yeah, the Oculus Rift, actually, I don't think that's the story I was looking for. But there is a story. Where is it? Um, maybe it was on... Um, huh. Oh, yeah. This is a story right here. Oculus Rift sells out at Amazon. Strong demand over the holidays. So this could be one of these things where a lot of people got some money for Christmas. You know, maybe they got a... Um, maybe they didn't get an Oculus Rift as a gift. But maybe they got like 100 bucks from grandma or 200 bucks from grandma if grandma was really rolling in the dough. And then maybe they want to take that money and they want to throw it at an Oculus Rift. And so the demand kind of spiked over this holiday season and Oculus Rift could be sold out in a lot of places. So that's pretty cool there. We know about the Mage's Tale. It is coming on February 5th. We're kind of excited about that. Um... And, you know, there's some other minor stories here. I didn't check this out. This is something I haven't looked at. Bionic Rage brings Streets of Rage and Final Fight to VR. Bionic Mayhem. Huh, that looks kind of cool. Maybe I could grab that trailer real quick. But we'll probably just go ahead and look at that tomorrow. I think it's okay that we could have a relatively short show today. I'm going to go ahead and bounce really quick here over to well you know what i do have one trailer to throw on the screen here let's go back to our standard scene here i'm going to throw a trailer on us on the screen for a game that is going to be coming possibly in the month of january it is called profundum profundum i have a cinematic teaser let's go ahead and check this out we can check out the steam page right after that because this could be a january game that we could be looking at in this month on Steam, a Steam VR release. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. Okay, yeah, that game is called Profundum, and the reason I'm bringing this game up is I'm going to switch over here to our web browser here, and I was just looking at upcoming games in Steam, you know, like the upcoming game list, and I noticed that this was on here, and it, and it's, it shows it as January 2019, so we don't have like an exact date or anything for this yet, but this is one of these games. I was kind of mentioning that January is looking kind of light. Like there's a not a lot that's popping off in the month of January. But there are going to be games that sneak out here and sneak out there. And Profundum could be one of these games. It says, Profundum is a virtual reality adventure game set in a steampunk world in which you are challenged to solve puzzles and discover secrets lurking in a mysterious underground complex. So if you are really into moving a bunch of levers around, a bunch of clockwork type gears, that appears to be what you're going to be doing a lot of in this game. It's basically a puzzle game. Graphics look pretty good. 
Um, looks kind of interesting. Kind of reminds me of Torn a little bit. I don't know how much, I don't know if there's much dialogue or story that is going along with this. Um, but it, it looks mildly interesting. So this is called Profundum. It is going to be uh, hitting, uh, where is it here? Profundum, yeah. It's just, you know, it, this could be a January 2019 game. Developer is Black Mouse. We don't really have a, a pricing or anything. But there is a bit of a story, puzzles, and that's basically it. It will be hitting the Vive, Oculus Rift, and Windows Mixed Reality. So this one could possibly pop out at any given time. Just wanted to mention that one. <laughs> Paradise Decay says, Anthony is like a moth. He's drawn to pretty logos. Well, you know what? I like looking at these logos. Like One of the things I do is I will go to virtual reality like this. I'll go to this section of Steam. And then maybe I'll just click Upcoming, right? And I'll just look at these logos here, and I'll try to find a game that maybe has a slightly decent logo. And I looked at Profundum's logo. I was like, eh, it looks kind of interesting. I thought I heard of it before. Like, here's an example. Okay, Be a Lord. Be a Lord. Okay, this logo looks pretty awful. Pretty awful logo here. Like, I think I might be able to make a... And, oh my God, look at this logo when you actually get in there. Ouch. This is by VR Entertainment. Hey, they got an exact release date for this puppy, January 14th, 2019. Be a lord. Doesn't everyone want to be a lord? Here it is. VR Entertainment presents first VR game ever. Be a lord. It's a game to relax after hard working day. No long quests, saving, or another boring stuffs. Another boring stuffs. Ah, oh, this is gold. Simple fantasy game. Three maps with a lot of enemies. Runic weapons, sword, axe, staff. Realistic enemies, some blood effects. Helpful if your boss was annoying today. Wow, be a lord. Could this be the stunner of January? Could we be looking at game of the month for January? Be a freaking lord. Who doesn't want to be a lord? Everybody wants to be a lord. Be a Lord. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know about this one. But but yeah, they might have spent like five more minutes working on that logo. They could have spent about five more minutes on that. But yeah, I am a fan of, of different kinds of logos here. Now, a lot of people in chat right now are talking about how brand new Oculus Rifts have different lenses. Gee, I wonder if this is really true. Let me take a look at some of these. Uh, see, Kevin Mars is saying new release, new lenses, what, when? Um, VR Gamers is replying to T-Dub. He says, yeah, they seem better. My buddy has a brand new Rift and his lenses are well better than my old Rift. Um, VR Gamers says circles are much closer. Hardly any God rays in his, in his HMD compared to my own. My rift is from December 2016, but I haven't tried anyone's that anyone that has a newer rift. That's rendered reality. Um, and T Dub is is replying back to VR Gamer saying, "I haven't heard they upgraded, but great news if they have." Um, Greg's VR says, "Is there any VR game that's good but has a crappy logo?" Well, you know what? We can look at that. We can take a look at that. Actually, let's bounce over to our web browser and chat. Let's go back here. Yeah, that's a good question. Are there VR games that are really freaking good, but they have a shittacular logo? And you know what? I could think of one, guys. I actually could think of one. Okay, so I'm going to click on HTC Vive here, and then we'll do relevance. We'll do it by user reviews. And you know, there's one that immediately pops to mind. Climby. Climby does not have a very good logo, folks. It does not have a very good logo. Okay, so these are supposedly like the highest rated games and of course these ratings can be gamed a little bit so like you know i take some of this with a gain of grain of salt here beat saber way up there gorn way up there h3 you know hot dogs horseshoes and hand grenades way up there like this one intrepid explorers pack i don't know what this is but that's not a very good logo i don't think the lab is kind of a mediocre logo if we really get down to it um overlord eh, that's okay in your face TD. Okay, how is this so ranked so high? Because it's free. That's why. So you gotta, if something's free, you gotta kind of throw it away. You can't really consider it. Iron Wolf has a pretty decent logo. Uh, this one, Laser Bait. 
yeah, that is pretty craptacular on the logo, but it's free, so completely ignore it. You can't take these free ones seriously because everybody loves free. Um, Compound's logo is meh. You know, it's kind of mediocre. Jet Island has kind of a weird logo uh, as we continue to explore these logos here. But I was looking for Climby. I thought it would show up pretty quickly, but I thought Climby's logo is kind of lame. Um, Castle Must Be Mine is kind of a basic logo. Uh, blah, 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 blah. VTOL VR, that's kind of a basic logo. Um, Conductor, very simple there with that logo. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Subnautica's got a pretty nice logo. Dreadhalls has a pretty nice logo. So yeah, we can talk about logos. But anyway, let's go ahead and get back over here. But that's pretty much going to do it, folks. Not much else is going on. We're going to go ahead and call this a show. We've actually lasted over 40 minutes, which that's kind of nice, considering not much is popping off here. And I do apologize, too. Part of this is my fault. I've been pretty much gone all this morning dealing with some appointments and stuff. I actually got a haircut. Got a nice haircut here, so uh, that is nice. Um and was pretty busy, was pretty busy up until just getting ready for the show here. So didn't have a lot of time to prep for news stories and whatnot. But that's going to go ahead and do it for our episode today. Now remember, Saturday, we will be back, but we will be back at noon. So noon Pacific on Saturday. And this Sunday, I believe, is the return of VR Roundtable. So VR Roundtable is going to make a return this Sunday, usually around 9 a.m., 9.15 a.m., 9.05 a.m. Pacific Time. Somewhere around then is usually when VR Roundtable does our episodes. And we're going to be talking about you know, kind of our Christmas break, stuff we've been playing over the Christmas break. We'll be talking about all the news. We kind of looking forward to CES 2019 and what we think about the year 2019, what we're excited for. So we will have that on Sunday. And then, of course, our Sunday episode of VR 365, the after party, probably close to around 11 a.m. or Well, no, actually, we usually start about 10 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes after the end of the VR Roundtable episode. And so maybe around 1040, something like that. I don't know. We'll have to figure out what time our show will be on Sunday. But tomorrow, we are at noon. So I will see everybody then tomorrow at noon. Take it easy. Have a great Friday and early Saturday. I'll see you guys then. Take it easy. Later. <laughs>